Okay. So we talked about your marketing strategy, very heavily email focused. And somehow, I don't even know you spent, can I, did I ask you, or can I ask you how much you spent to build up your first 80,000 emails? Is it going to get me upset? Am I going to be jealous? Yeah, it was $3,000. Oh my gosh. Okay. If you're, it's basically impossible. That's impossible. That's It's impossible to, yeah, no. Okay. Well, he's a unicorn. That doesn't Uh, happen. (laughs) Please, please, please listeners out there. This does not happen. I'm super lucky. Wow. Um, So yeah, it's amazing. I, okay. I mean, you started with nothing. You had an idea, no email list. You built this email list, 80,000 people with just a ridiculous budget, a ridiculously small budget. And then you were like, okay, I'm ready to launch my Kickstarter. So Mm -hmm. how well did you nurture that email list? Were you emailing them to make sure, because the whole point of getting an email list is not to just have these emails and sit on them. You want them to buy when you launch. So how often did you stay in contact with them so that you were sure at least they remembered who you are when you were ready to launch? Yeah. So that's a great question because I think that education piece is undervalued because I think you could have a thousand person email list and, and make tons of money the second you launch because they're well educated. What we did was once they signed up for a whole kickoff labs thing and potentially shared now the list, only like 4% of our list actually shared. So that's a crazy stat, but they, we, we tried to get as many people as possible into a private Facebook group and there's goods and bad to that. Facebook is a really volatile platform. Politically, it's not the best time to be running a Facebook group. Those are different discussions, but the good part of a Facebook group is there's access to a dialogue. You hear what the customer wants and you can educate them somewhat. It's not as good as email for education, but you can at least kind of engage and see what's going on. So what we did was we tried to get about 10% of our email leads into a Facebook group, which they did. And then we would use the Facebook group to kind of get the information from them, like of what's going on, like what are they worried about, right? So magnet safety. So, so every, you know, there's threads about people freaking out about magnet safety. What do we do? We make a YouTube video and a Facebook video, and then we send it out to the email list. Cause if there's 10% of the people in the Facebook group that are worried about magnets, there's probably another 10 or 20% of our email list that are worried about magnets. And so it was a really great way to source information. And we would put out email two to four times a week, I would say. So we were pretty hard on it. Yeah. And I mean, you know, listen, the people who are going to unsubscribe are going to unsubscribe, right? I mean, we started our email list at the end of September and we launched at the end of January. So we did, you know, a good like four months of this. Wow. So we did a lot of education. I mean, by the end of it, it it was almost like every person on our email list was like an investor in the company because (gasps) they knew so much that was going on. Now, if you wanted the full interview, head over to club.thetoycoach.com and check out the Podcast Insiders Club. As a member, you get access to the extended audio and video of this episode and so much more.